welcome back to another uh, segment of a message of encouragement. Last time we were with you, we talked about uh, Jeremiah 29 11 and uh, the plans God have for your life. Wonderful plans, exciting plans with an expected end. Today we are going to share with you when life is interrupted, God's plan for your life can still come to pass. Let's have prayer. Father God, we thank you for this day and we thank you for another opportunity to come before you, before your people, Father God, and spread the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We thank you for those that have tuned in. We thank you for those that are joining us. And we decree and declare now, before we get started in this lesson, that what is said, Father God, will really be a blessing to them this day. We thank you that they will have so much to take away, Father God, with them. We decree and declare, Father God, that you are in the midst. We thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit working, and we give you the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen, and thank you, Lord. I believe everyone would agree that all year our lives have been interrupted and literally controlled by this COVID-19 pandemic. We can't move about as freely as before. We can't be close to the ones we love outside of our immediate family. Family gatherings are virtually at, uh, non-existent. Our work environment has been reduced to at-home assignments. Hospital visits to loved ones is practically a no-no, except where certain rules and or limitations have been put into place. Life's interruptions happen when things don't go exactly as we have planned. These interruptions can be an act, a simple utterance, or a long period that interrupts someone or something. I believe I can say that every human life on this planet has been interrupted by this pandemic. Difficulty, adversity, trouble, misfortune, however you want to describe it, can make or break us. What do you mean by that, teacher? I'm glad you asked. We will either learn from our experiences during this, the interruption affecting what we desire to do, or become sour, bitter, and resentful, and close ourselves off to what God has for us. We don't want to miss it. We really don't want to miss it. And you got to understand that what we are going through, I believe with all my heart, is a temporary inconvenience. And we don't want to derail ourselves in a, into a direction God never intended for us to go. I hope you're listening to me. We really don't want to, de because of inconvenience, because of impatience, because you're not happy, because you, you, things are not going like you thought they would be going in 2020. All we got to do is be patient, ride the storm through, and trust God. Today, for the next 15 or 20 minutes, I want to encourage your heart by sharing with you the very short version of an interruption in life of a person from the Old Testament. We first meet Joseph, the dreamer, starting in Genesis chapter 37. His life was disrupted by several bad, bad, bad experiences that could have left him with a venge vengeful spirit, bitter to the bone, and very, very resentful. I'm not sure that many or any of us would have made it on the other side of any of these malicious attacks that were unleashed against him. Oh, but God. Thank you, Jesus. Paul was very detailed in, in, in sharing life's interruptions in 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 9, in the Amplified Version. I'm taking those scriptures. And then uh, in verse 10, in the King James Version. In 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 9, which is our, our foundational scripture for this lesson, Paul writes, uh, and I want to read it 
uh, like he's written it in the Amplified, like he stated it in the Amplified. We are hedged in, pressed on every side. You know, when they said shelter in place, I'm sure we started beginning, started feeling like we would be hedged in, which was being hedged in. You couldn't really move about freely or anything like that. We are hedged in, pressed on every side, troubled and oppressed in every way. This brought some real bad attitudes among people. You know, they started feeling depressed. They started feeling oppressed. They started feeling lonesome. A lot of different spirits started to attack people. You know, pressed on every side. What else did, did Paul say? But we're not cramped or crushed. We suffer embarrassments and are perplexed and unable to find a way out, but we're not driven to despair. We don't need to start talking about, you know, taking our lives and getting out of this world. God is not through with you. Listen to me. God is not through with you. This is not the time to be giving up, quitting, throwing in the towel, and talking crazy. Yes, we are driven to despair, but we're not going anywhere. We're going we're gonna to ride this storm. We are pursued, persecuted, and hard driven, but not deserted to stand alone. And we are struck down to the ground. Joseph, the person that we're studying this week, Joseph, the one that we're looking at, the dreamer, he was not just struck down to the ground, he was placed underground. He was placed in a, what's called a well pit. And thank God there was no water in the well, but he was placed in a well pit, but never struck out and destroyed. He was never struck out and he was never destroyed. And thank God, one of his brothers, the brothers are the ones who threw him down there. I want you to read the story of Joseph, starting in Genesis 37, all the way through uh, Genesis 50. There, he, Joseph is somebody to admire. Joseph is somebody to really look at as an example uh, for your life. Reuben had mercy, and not only did he have mercy, he had compassion, because his compassion is what led him to reach out to Joseph. The brothers wanted to leave him in the pit to die, but, Je but Reuben wanted to return him to his father, okay? And then in verse 10, uh, I want to say this. We are always bearing about in our body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Let me tell you something. We are here to glorify God. And when you have life interruptions, and we all have them, y'all. We have life interruptions every day. But when you have a life interruption that's uh, for an extended period of time, you, you don't start uh, trying to uh, give in and quit and, 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 and start talking about, I don't know if I can make it. You can make it. You just have to uh, stay out of your pity party. You, you can make it, but don't go uh, into a pity party and don't start inviting others to your pity party, okay? See, I have made the determination in my life that I will not frustrate the grace of God that is upon my life. There's a grace, God's unmerited favor, God's unlimited favor, God's unearned favor. Favor and grace are synonymous. I'm telling you, there's a grace on your life that God wants you to do something. You have the power to do it. You have the authority to do it. We have the dominion to do it. And God wants you to do something, and this is not the time to, not, to start thinking that you're, well, you're not able to do it. You're well able to do what God has called you to do. We just got to ride out this storm right now. I didn't even know I'd be doing this during the storm. My God, during this pandemic, I, you know, this was all a surprise to me. Thank God, God gave somebody the uh, creative idea to do this and to get the word out, to encourage your heart, to let you know that we go, we're gonna all get through this. Yes, it's tough for all of us, but we're gonna get through this. And you got to know it. After everything is said and done, and after, and after everything is back to what will be the new normal, we will still be standing for the sole purpose of glorifying our Heavenly Father. If you just keep Jesus in your heart, and in, which is his rightful place, if you just keep him on the throne of your heart, you will be able to make it. If you just keep trusting in God, you'll be able to make it through all of this. And you'll look back and say, my, what a tall mountain I climbed. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you 
Father God, for the listeners today. Thank you that somebody's heart is being uplifted this day. Thank you, Father God, that somebody is listening and somebody, Father God, is throwing off all of that oppression and throwing off the depression and throwing off the I can't make it and I can't do it attitude. Thank you, Father God, that they're becoming a winner. They are becoming, Father God, knowing, a, a person knowing that they got the victory. And that's what I want you to walk out saying, I got the victory. I can do this. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. After everything is back to what we will be, uh, what we, what will be the new normal, we will still be standing for the sole purpose of glorifying our Heavenly Father. Joseph had an assignment, and the reason they could not kill him, the reason they could not uh, do without him, is because Joseph had an assignment that would affect the lives of hundreds of thousands of people over in Egypt. And let me tell you, whatever Whatever God has promised you, whatever God has told you, that is what you stand on. That is what you hold to. Joseph had been dreaming uh, dreams of, 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 uh, of having, uh, being over people and over things. And he had, been, he had been sharing those dreams with his family members. They didn't appreciate the dreams. In fact, it infuriated them. They, they hated him to the bone and wanted to kill him, and that's why he wind up in a pit. But I don't care. Don't share your dreams with everybody. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit just quickened me and told you, don't share your dreams with everybody, okay? Because everybody's not for you. Everybody don't want to see you make it. So back to the lesson. Now, because of jealousy, his own brothers threw him in a pit and later sold him into slavery. Do you realize that? Potiphar's wife lied on him. And because of her lie, he was then thrown into prison. And the cupbearers forgot all about him, the people that he was in there helping. Now watch this. Joseph had every opportunity to lose heart, lose faith, and throw in the towel on life itself not only in people, but also in his dreams. He could have taken just the opposite attitude about everything that he had already experienced with God and started thinking that it's just not going to happen. My friends, at each setback, watch this, at each setback, when he got set back, uh, by his brothers, thrown in the pit. When he got out the pit and was in Potiphar's house, and Potiphar's wife lied on him, that was a setback. And he set back. And then when he got in, in prison, and the cupbearers all forgot about it. And he set back. Joseph had an opportunity to make a choice. He had to make a choice. And he chose to remain steadfast and unmovable. He chose to remain steadfast and unmovable in the Lord. And at each setback in our lives, in your life, in my life, we all have setbacks. We all have interruptions. We all have disappointments. We, 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 all, we all have them. adversity. We, too, have a choice to make. But watch this. Instead of letting the jealous actions of his brothers, the lies from Potiphar's wife, and absent-minded cupbearers break him, Joseph chose instead to let each circumstance make him better and not bitter, and consequently, he developed into the man God needed him to become during this time in Egypt's history. Are y'all listening to me out there? He, rather than, look like, look like the more the, the enemy tried to do to him, the more things that came on him, came against him, the more adversity he had. It was like the stronger he was getting. You know, y'all remember Popeye? 
the sailor, uh, the, the stronger pop I got. Every time the bully, uh, I can't remember his name, but every time the bully came and tried to beat Popeye up, he might have beat him up a little bit, but once Popeye got his spinach, all you need to do is get a hold of your spinach, you know, and I'm telling you, you'll get strong muscles. I'm telling you, look like every time they did something to Joseph to try to make him quit, to try to uh, cause him to back off, uh, to go another direction. Joseph got stronger and stronger and stronger. I just love reading about him. I love studying about him because his, his fortitude, he just had a fortitude that just wouldn't quit. He had a resolve that just wouldn't give up. And I thank God for that. I thank God that he's recorded uh, among these 66 books so that we can have somebody to study and look at. He got, he got better and not bitter and consequently developed into the man God needed him to become during this time in Egypt's history. At this hour, there is no such animal as quitting. Yes, there's adversity. Yes, there's the enemy. Yes, there's interruptions. And you can tell the enemy, the devil, I see what you're doing and I hear what you're saying. But like Paul said, and you'll find out, I really love this verse, none of these things move me. And it happened in Joseph's life. None of the things that they were doing moved Joseph to quit. And I thank God for that. Church, listen to me. Our success or failure depends so much on how we handle the adversities, that are unleashed in our lives. As long as you are living on this earth, you must know, realize, and understand that adversity, difficulty, unwanted circumstances are going to happen. How we handle life's interruptions today will affect the people we meet on tomorrow. Did you hear me? How we handle life's interruptions today will affect the people that we meet on tomorrow. When life is interrupted, trust God, for he is still in control. God is still on the throne. If you receive that word today, give God a hallelujah where you stand or where you sit in your space. If there's someone out there and you don't know the Lord as your personal savior, Let's just uh, walk the Roman road. Repeat after me, Father God, I know without Jesus I am lost, but I don't want to be lost, I want to be saved. And Father God, I come to you and I repent of my sins and I thank you for forgiving me. I thank you for receiving me into the kingdom of heaven. I've been translated now out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son and I'm calling on the name of Jesus right now Jesus 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 I'm calling on your name and now I thank you Jesus that I am saved amen and thank you Lord go and tell somebody about your new life in Christ Jesus